to Make Share Grow, a podcast about art making and the creative process. I'm Julie Marriott, painter, mother, and lover of bold and joyful color. Come on into my studio. I hope what I share here about my art practice will inspire you in your own creative journey. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me this week. This is week 10 of my documentation of creating a painting collection. So this week, I began and I'm only about, probably about halfway through, two paintings. And I've said before, my goal is to finish two paintings a week, but I have rarely kept up with that. (laughs) And I'm just realizing that's a little bit beyond what I can accomplish in a week, but it's a good stretch goal, I think, for me. So I keep it. I keep that goal there. And even if it takes me um, like a week and a day or two to get through them, I feel like it keeps me on a better pace. So I began my very last two rectangle format paintings for this collection. Woohoo! I have 12 of them. So these are my last two of the 12. And I'm about halfway, if not two thirds of the way through these two. And um, I am painting them in the vertical format. So they're my bouquets in their vase, their vases, <laughs> vase vase. Um, and I am loving being back in this format after being uh, working in the horizontal format for a while. And so I am working on these vertical ones. And the thing that's really exciting to me about these two is that I've been able to keep really loose and experimental pretty far into the process. So as far as I am in the process, they're still very loose and pretty undefined, which I am calling a major achievement for myself. So what I have been tracking all throughout this painting collection is sort of the growth and change that's happening in my style of and my method of painting in this new collection. For many years, I've painted and have kind of honed a a style of painting where I paint very crisp and very clear paintings and the brush strokes are very clean and smooth. And this collection is about the opposite of that. (laughs) And my flower forms and the way that I paint uh, kind of the way that I express my flower forms and the leaves and the different botanical sort of elements, I would say is the same, but the method that I'm painting them is so much more layered and textural and embracing all of the things that I kind of didn't want in those other paintings. Um, And it's been so interesting following that. And so I'm calling it a major success that I've made it this far through these two paintings, keeping very loose, very um, textural, very undefined, very unclear. (laughs) Like I have my flowers and my composition there, but the edges of each of the elements, each of the botanical elements is very loose and undefined still. And that's hard for me. It's actually very hard for me to stay unclear for this long. Like I want to start adding very crisp, clear details to like define all of the shapes. And um, I'm getting more and more comfortable with staying loose for longer. So that's been really fun. The fun thing about these two paintings is that I'm really proud of myself for how far they've come. I've come in being able to stay loose. So And there's so many beautiful things happening in these paintings, and I'll link them in the show notes. You can go to the post for this episode and see some photos of them. Um, I'm loving so many of the moments in these paintings where there's just layers and there's translucent washes over different shapes, and you're getting 
some really fun, unexpected colors and textures going on. And I'm finding that some of my favorite moments in this whole collection are happening in, in the in-between places, like the spaces in between the flowers, and then also in like the deep parts of the petals. So I like to paint flowers that sort of have deeper centers. And so like um, magnolias and peonies, And so they kind of have the depths in between all the petals and there's some really fun, abstract, unexpected, neat color things and shape things going on in those places. So that's been really exciting to me this week, finding those fun surprises. And um, I would say that in my previous work, there were always surprises, but they weren't the same kind of ones. I didn't, I definitely did not plan out my paintings um, in a very careful, formal way before. And so the way that the painting would turn out was always a fun surprise, but there weren't the same kind of surprises where when colors layer over each other, you're seeing through transparencies. My um, previous way of working was very opaque. Each color would be very thick and opaque and colors wouldn't visually mix at all. And I actually was always kind of like, oh, those transparent colors, you've got to like thicken them up, (laughs) get them more opaque, because some pigments are just naturally more transparent. And now I'm totally embracing that with using the different fluid acrylics and scraping them over other colors or brushing them on really thinly over other colors. And there's just so much fun, unexpected things happening. So that has been the highlight of my painting week. The other kind of a fun thing that I've been observing was as I'm working on these paintings and kind of looking back at the whole pile of pretty much finished paintings that's accumulating in my studio, I have been kind of reflecting over how some of the paintings are more tightly rendered and other ones are more loosely rendered. And I think that's kind of fun. I've talked for the last couple episodes about variety and consistency within collections and how there's so many different ways of handling that and interpreting that for every artist. Um, And I'm kind of observing that my way of working in this new collection has been kind of this ebb and flow of like a push and pull between keeping things more loose and feeling good about having the painting be finished when it's a lot less defined and a lot more sort of abstract textural things are happening. And then some of the more, some of the paintings, I'm feeling like I want to resolve them more and have them be more clearly defined. And I think there's part of me that wants everything to match and be kind of at the same place resolution wise, but I'm actually getting more and more comfortable and kind of happy that there's sort of this push and pull in the collection. And so that there's just, I don't know, I think it just expresses what's happening in my work more where some of them are more evocative have more elements that are recognizable and more a little bit more closer to the style of my previous way of painting. And then some are more a full embrace of this looser, super expressive, more abstract textural things happening, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so anyway, it's cool looking over the collection. And I think I'll reflect a little bit more on that when everything is finished and do kind of an episode looking at it at a, as a whole, kind of talking about that more. But I was just starting to think about that this week and thought that was interesting. I invited some questions, some more questions from my audience on Instagram this week and got a handful of great questions that I'd love to talk about over the couple next episodes. So the one that I thought I would address and answer today was this one. So the question is, how do you plan your collections? Do you plan a guiding principle to keep everything cohesive? And I thought I'd answer this by way of sort of going over my history of collections, because I don't think I may have done that in a previous season, but I thought it would be fun to kind of talk about my last couple um, more recent collections. Um, 
So I would say, yes, I tend to have a guiding concept, a visual concept for my collections where I like to think about something that's particularly interesting to me at the moment and then have that idea kind of guide where I'm going. So last year in 2020, I had, I would say, three kind of significant art collections, painting collections. So um, the reason I kind of hesitated is because one of the three was a daily painting project, but I still feel like that was a very specific body of work. So I'm going to call that a collection. So the first collection was a collection of abstracted women holding kind of big and overflowing armfuls of flowers. And I had been thinking about that concept and that idea for a long time. I had written it down on my ideas note in my phone and had kind of pondered it, but never quite felt like it was, I didn't feel like I would be able to execute it, you know, and live up to my vision of how beautiful I wanted it to be. I just didn't feel like I was quite there. And then in early last year, I said, I'm going for it. I'm going to do it. I'll figure it out. It'll be good. And um, I think it was a great time for doing that collection because I had gotten to a place where I was very comfortable with how I painted flowers. So I wasn't feeling as experimental experimental. (laughs) That's how you say it. I wasn't feeling as experimental with the flowers. So that kind of freed me up to feel like I could handle those. And I'd kind of mastered that element, but the women painting them in an abstracted, expressive color sort of way, um, felt a lot more challenging. And like, that was the growth part of the collection for me. And I think actually just saying it that way, I think expresses how I approach collections, I usually choose a growth subject or something, an element that I want to explore that I've never done before that I feel like is going to grow me in my skills that seems exciting and challenging. Because I think we're all, as artists, we're all in our art practices to feel like we have a challenge, like a creative challenge or problem to solve. And so I like to pick a creative challenge for each of my collections. And so for that one, it was the women and like introducing the form into my work, which I had not done as fully before. And um, then the next collection um, that I did was a painting a day, a 30 day painting project where I um, painted a new type of flower every day and shared it. And I released this collection differently where I would put that week's paintings up for sale on my website on Saturday and sell them over the weekend and then would continue on with my project and painting a new batch the next week. And that that kind of concept was more based around just wanting kind of coming out of a more formal collection that was very like more planned and this felt more spontaneous. Um, and so it was very specific though, where the, like the way that I approached them, I painted them on paper and they were all 11 by 14 and all of them, um, had a very loose sort of washy color background that I would paint beforehand and let it dry. And then I would paint like one or two. To or if it was like a small type of flower, I would paint like a grouping of them, but um, I would paint a, like a very specific um, like study, I guess you could say, a pretty realistic study of the flower of the day. So that was my second collection last year. And so that was my guiding concept. And then for my third collection, my garden grown collection, um, the challenge for me was painting birds. I had had painted birds in sort of single one-off paintings or commissions where somebody wanted one in it, but I had never really focused on them for an extended period of time. And so that was my challenge. So I gathered lots of images of birds and studied how their, you know, how their feather patterns were and um, like, how do you, 
how do you get them to be positioned in a way that feels harmonious with the flowers and feels like they're outdoors and kind of moving or flying or sitting? So that was a great challenge. And um, so, yeah, so that was my my plan for the Garden Grown collection. And that felt very cohesive because I kind of picked a single way that the flowers were going to grow kind of like they were outdoors where they're all coming up from the bottom of the canvas. And um, so that was the guiding idea for that one. And then for this collection, my guiding principle was they're all going to be bouquets in vases. And it wasn't until I got into the collection more that I decided they're basically all blue vases, but I like that cohesiveness too. And I just love, like I'm loving blue in this collection. I feel like it's such a wonderful um, complement to the warmer colors that I like to use and the flowers and often in the leaves. I like a lot of warm colors in my leaves too. So painting on a cool background and having like cooler accent colors, I think is just so beautiful. So, um, that is kind of my guiding principle. And then the stretching idea, the growth idea was just all this new um, tools and textures and paint types and um, painting style, uh, painting, yeah, I guess I could say painting methods, I guess if that's a good word for it, um, that I'm using in this collection is sort of the growth side of it for me, where I'm painting flowers and I'm painting the elements that I am pretty familiar with. These are all generally flower types that I've painted before, but just interpreting them through this new lens and this this new um, textural way of painting is the growth aspect for me. And I feel like this is this has been a big step and I feel like I've grown so much through this. So now we're going to move on to something that I loved this week. So the thing that was super inspiring to me this week was an exhibit, a um, art opening that happened at the Art and Light Gallery in Greenville, South Carolina. So I follow them on Instagram. Of course, I'm in California, so I'm nowhere near South Carolina, but I love following Art and Light on Instagram. They ca- they carry really beautiful and interesting artwork. And the artist Diane Kilgore Condon had a show with them this week. And Diane is a um, Greenville native as well. And her artwork, it was, um, well, the collection was called her Wild Garden Collection. And these paintings are just so stunning. They're so magical and vibrant and fanciful and dreamy. They're um, paintings of animals and then also botanical elements. So like flowers and branches and trees. Um, And they're just this like explosion of celebration of life and creation and color and nature. They're just fantastic. And I love the way that she paints her sub- her subjects that were, they're pretty realistically rendered, but then they're place, like the animals and the plants are placed together in ways that feel very like dreamy and imaginative. Like there's this one, um, of, I'm forgetting which animal it is, but it's like enveloped in flowers just all around it, like huge oversized flowers. And then the one I really just wanted to drop everything and buy this painting was um, of a deer and there was like a branch going in front of it and the branch is just covered in all of these colorful birds and it's called the yearling and the choir. And it was just, it's just so stunning and fanciful and dreamy. And I just keep using these words over and over because I don't know how to describe it better. So go and um, follow the link. I'll link in the show notes to the exhibition, but I was really inspired. And it's, it's fun to find an artist's work that moves you really deeply and just feels so resonant with what you love in art, but is so completely different than what you paint yourself. And I just think that's so fun and interesting and exciting. And so that was the thing that really was exciting and inspiring to me this week. Well, that wraps it up for this week. 
Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. And I am having so much fun sharing with you each week what I've been working on. And I hope it's been fun and inspiring for you too. If you have not had a chance to rate and review the episode on Apple Podcasts, would you mind doing that? And then also, I would really appreciate if you have been enjoying a specific episode and would like to share it on Instagram and tag me, I would love to connect with you. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening and following along with me each week. All right. Bye for now. Bye.